second. No worries. And we're live. Hello there. My name is Dr. Joshua Rubenstein, and I'm a faculty member at Bastyr University in Kenmore, Washington. And today we're going to be speaking with Dr. Julie Greenberg. Uh, Dr. Julie Greenberg is a licensed naturopathic doctor or an ND, as well as a registered herbalist who specializes in integrative dermatology. Uh, she is the founder of the Center for Integrative and Naturopathic Dermatology, a holistic clinic that approaches skin and hair problems by finding and treating the root cause. She has also launched a functional, functional medicine education site, rootcausedermatology.com. Dr. Greenberg holds degrees from Northwestern University, Stanford University, as well as Bastyr University. Her research on the gut microbiome of acne patients has been published in a leading clinical dermatology journal, and, present, and she's also presented in multiple conferences. While in naturopathic medical school, Dr. Greenberg received training with leading experts in dermatology at the University of Washington, the Medical School of Dermatology Clinic, and Seattle Children's Hospital Pediatric Dermatology Clinic. She lectures, lectures at Bastyr University and other naturopathic medical schools and is sought after to speak at conferences around the United States on the topics of hair, skin, and nail health. Welcome, Dr. Greenberg. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, so I understand that naturopathic medicine was actually a second career for you. Would you maybe tell us about that decision and what led you toward naturopathic medicine? Yes, it definitely was a second career. My, my background was in, I did econ undergrad and then I got my MBA at Stanford and I worked very much in, in the business world in finance and strategy and corporate planning, so not naturopathic medicine or medicine at all. Um, but it was actually after I graduated from business school, uh, was the first time I encountered kind of a chronic healthcare issue in my life. And it took a couple of years to get diagnosed, but it turns out I had a Hashimoto's thyroid disease. Mm. And I came to, um, to naturopathic medicine kind of slowly, like it was a journey. You know, I had never really thought about my health, preventative medicine, anything like that before I got sick. But when I was finally diagnosed, I, I had such a kind of jarring experience with one of the leading um, medical hospitals in Los Angeles. You know, the, basically they were like, oh, this is what you have. It's an autoimmune disease. We don't know what causes it. We don't know how to fix it. You're going to take this medication for the rest of your life. There's nothing we can do. You're probably going to be tired and gain weight over time. And like, it was kind of like, that's that. And I walked out pretty shell-shocked. Like, how is, this is like the best of medicine has to offer, you know, how can this be? And it, so it sent me on a path of trying to discover, like, I didn't know it, but you know, what is the root cause of, you know, autoimmune disease and what's happening with my thyroid? And I learned about food and how important it was. And, and then it kind of brought me to um, the skincare products, the things that we put on our skin and how they can be endocrine disruptors and impact the thyroid. So I always say I, I came to dermatology in a very naturopathic way through a, a totally different organ system, the thyroid. But then I became really into trying to make my own skincare products um, to get out those chemicals and endocrine disruptors. And then I fell in love with dermatology. And unfortunately, I made the mistake of in my early 30s thinking I was too old to go back to school and become a doctor. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, graduated from an advanced degree. I didn't have any of the pre-meds. Um, so it meant I would have to go back to college in order to be, go to naturopathic medical school. And, you know, sadly, for almost, almost a decade, I convinced myself that I was just too old and I couldn't do it. And then... When I went to turn 40, I kind of gave myself a birthday gift of signing up at community college for one gen chemistry class. I said, I'm not, I'm not looking at like years and years. I'm just going to try to take one class and see how it goes. And I loved it. And I was like, my brain is still functioning. I can do this. And so I finally committed to going back. And my fear was, I didn't want to look back when I was 50 and say, uh, when you were 40, you should have just committed and done it. You know, why didn't you do it? And I turned 50 this year and I, I thanked my 40 year old self that I did it. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I do have to say, uh, over, over my 18 years of teaching a best year, um, those students that came in, uh, to naturopathic medicine as a second career have been some of the most motivated, dedicated, and excellent students I've had the privilege of working with. Um, so I'm curious, um, could you tell us a little bit more about your approach to naturopathic dermatology? 
Yes. So, you know, fundamental to my decision to go back to naturopathic medical school and not conventional medical school is that I knew that just, you know, throwing pharmaceuticals at the skin wasn't going to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish for patients, which was really finding and treating the root cause, which was one of the naturopathic principles. We, whenever possible, we're trying not to just suppress symptoms, but go in and figure out like, why is the body malfunctioning? What do we have to address to correct that? And then let the body function properly on its own. And that's not the way dermatology really works today. You know, it's much more about suppressive medications, um, biologics, antibiotics, things that are kind of going to push the inflammation back down. So it really was my naturopathic training that helped me kind of put the pieces together to to find and treat the root, root cause of chronic dermatological disease. So for me, it doesn't matter what my patient walks in with, and I only see patients with dermatological complaints. So things like acne, eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, hair loss, like alopecia areata, um, they've all are fundamentally, you know, coming in for a dermatological complaint. I go to the gut, the gut microbiome. Um, and at this point, I've done hundreds and hundreds of tests on the gut microbiome. And I found something really interesting, which is that there's patterns by different disease of what's happening in the gut. So for my acne patients, I tend to see a pattern of three things that tend to go wrong. They have something called H. pylori overgrowth, candida overgrowth, and protozoal overgrowth. Hmm. That is really different than what is happening, let's say, in my eczema patients. They have what we call a leaky gut, and then they tend to have overgrowth of three organisms, at least, um, staphylococcus, strep staph streptococcus, staph aureus, and candida. Hmm. Um, but it really varies by condition. And I guess I should back up for the viewers who don't really know what is the gut microbiome and let them know that every adult human has about three to five pounds of microbes living in their gut. And that's totally normal. We want that. We've co-evolved with them. But what's in there really matters. And naturopathic doctors have been talking about the gut for over 30 years. And the rest of science is starting to catch up. And if you look in PubMed, the main research site for gut microbiome, and you trend it over the years, you just see this exponential growth in research being done on the gut mm -hmm. microbiome, even by conventional medicine now. It's well accepted that the gut microbiome plays a huge role in, in just about every part of our health. And um, I, I connected all those pieces and I started focusing on that for skin and I've had miraculous results with patients by focusing in on that gut microbiome issue, correcting that. It's really the root cause of a lot of this disease and things like acne and eczema clear when you address the gut. I love it. Well, and you know what occurs to me uh, is something that we talk about a lot in uh, naturopathic medicine, which is the, the root cause, right? Uh, and underlying so many of these dermatological uh, conditions really is inflammation, right, as, a, as yes. a root cause. So I'm curious if you can speak a little bit more about how inflammation is affected by the gut microbiome and maybe contrast this with the use of, for instance, corticosteroids for topical corticosteroids for eczema. Yes. So uh, the, I think the idea to most people of inflammation is kind of this like amorphous concept, like inflammation, it's like love, something that, or faith, you know, something that you can't quantify. But what we know once you become trained as a doctor that you can quantify inflammation and there's things in the body, certain chemicals and substances like inflammatory cytokines that really we can quantify and, and put inflammation into different buckets. So that is true for the skin issues as well. So um, we can use two different examples. Let's talk about eczema and psoriasis. Eczema, the type of inflammation that's occurring is um, inflammation associated to an allergic pathway. So those are specific inflammatory cells called Th2, T helper cells 2, um, that really drives eczema. And so it's a particular kind of inflammation. And um, we can see with the gut microbiome testing that that leaky gut, if things are getting through the gut into the bloodstream, um, that can cause this kind of allergic response and things like fungal things or worms used to kind of um, make this, this type of inflammation go crazy in people. We don't have worms so much anymore in, in kind of the Western world, but um, you know, we can see that very specific inflammation getting kind of... Um, explosive in, in eczema patients. And so the idea behind steroids is 
okay, let's, let's just put it onto the rash and push that inflammation back down again. And anyone who's had eczema or has used topical steroids has probably been a little bit on the steroid hamster wheel, which is you're using it and it works great at the beginning, but if you don't treat that root cause of inflammation, you have to step up your use, more frequent use of the, um, mm -hmm. the topical steroids and higher and higher potency topical steroids. Um, until some patients go on oral uh, steroids or immunosuppressant biologics that they get shots and it suppresses this TH2 pathway. Um, with psoriasis, the inflammation is different. It's called a TH17 pathway. And um, again, we can quantify it and see what it is. And again, it's related to the gut and overgrowth in the gut and other kinds of organisms like strep throat will really cause a lot of this inflammation in psoriasis patients and mm. trigger outbreaks or exacerbations. Um, so by going in and seeing what's going on in the gut that's driving this inflammation and cleaning it up, we quiet down the immune system. About 70 or 80% of our immune system comes from the gut. So if you've got inflammation and overgrowth of organisms and pathogens in the gut, that's going to go through your entire bloodstream and you're going to get basically a whole systemic, you know, inflammatory response. So that's why I think it's just so effective to go find out what's going on in the gut, calm that down, the whole immune system calms down. And that's where we see just great results um, in treating chronic dermatological disease without the suppressive medication. We're treating it at the root cause. Yeah. Well, and obviously we, I think, I think in medicine, everyone really tries to identify and treat the root cause as much as possible. Right. And so what I'm hearing from you is that for a lot of skin conditions and, and uh, dermatological diseases, that inflammation can be most effectively addressed at its root by treating the gut, which I absolutely agree with. Um, you mentioned suppression a couple of times, like what, what's the harm in continuing to use corticosteroids topically in your mind? Yeah. So for me, there's a couple of things. Um, we know that the corticosteroids are, are artificially suppressing the system. And with patients, I use the example of think of like a really powerful coil, right? And you want to, you want to push that coil down. So you take all your body weight and you push the coil down. So it uses all your might to hold it down. Well, the minute you let go, what happens to the coil? It doesn't just go back to its normal height. It does this boing, 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 right? All of that stored, stored energy, it can go up much higher than it initially did. And we see that with immunosuppression where people are using topical steroids, let's say for extended periods of time. And when they stop, they will actually get a flare because the system is reacting to being suppressed. And now it's been trying so hard to push back against that suppression. And suddenly something's gone and it's like, whoosh, and people can get huge flares. There's also unfortunately a disease called topical steroid withdrawal syndrome that now is actually recognized by things like the National Eczema Society. So this is not just a fringe idea. It's well accepted within you know, more mainstream medicine that you can get this overuse of steroids and um, we still are kind of trying to learn about exactly what's going on, but um, ster corticosteroids, uh, mimic something we produce in the body called cortisol. And if the body is seeing enough of the cortisol coming from external sources, it can kind of shut down the production in the adrenal glands. And it causes a whole systemic response uh, where people kind of become allergic to the steroids. They can't use them anymore, but their system is so confused by the suppression. And it takes some people years to, to, tr to try to get out of TSW. And it's really severe. I treat it and it's, it's a horrible disease when it gets to that point. So, you know, steroids were really meant to be used for no more than a week. And I think if you've got a rash and you can just put some steroids on it for a couple of days and it goes away, fantastic, right? That's an appropriate, great use of steroids. But if you're starting on this hamster wheel where oh, it's, it's back, there's more, I'm needing more and more applications. We're stepping up in stronger and stronger steroids. You got to, ask the question, you know, what's, what's really going wrong in the system. And instead of just trying to hold it down, how do you fix what's going on? Yeah. So I, I'm wondering if maybe you can give a little bit of an overview of your approach to say a patient with either eczema or psoriasis, like what does the, the visit look like? Uh, and when we're really addressing gut health, like what are some of the, the ways that you do that? Yeah, so it is similar for all of my patients, no matter what the you know issue is, the, the kind of process is the same. So we're gonna run two tests to test their gut microbiome. Even though I know if they're eczema, 
oh, I can expect to kind of see this batch of problems, or if there's psoriasis, it's probably this batch. We always say in naturopathic medicine, treat the individual, treat the person in front of you. So I can't assume these things, right? I have to test your gut microbiome and see what's going on for you. So I use a stool test and a urine test to do that. The stool test gives me a really good picture of the bacterial issues going on in the gut. And the urine test gives me a really good picture of fungal issues. So things maybe like candida yeast or molds. Once I get those labs, I can see all the issues that I need to fix. And with patients, um, it's kind of a dual pronged approach. I do use botanical. So all herbal topicals, no like steroids or antibiotics usually. Um, but we have to do internal treatments to treat what I see on the lab. So um, as you mentioned, I'm a registered herbalist as well as, you know, four years of herbal training at Bastyr, which is, you know, fundamental to any naturopathic degree is, is good herbal training. Um, so I use a lot of herbs and supplements to clean up the issues that I see going on on the, the gut microbiome testing and then topicals to try to soothe what's happening on the skin and, and repair skin. And all patients, it's like that. I usually see patients about every two and a half months for follow-up. I move through different protocols each time because there's there's a lot going on. By the time somebody has chronic acne or psoriasis or eczema, you can't just treat them for one thing and then you're done. You know, it, it takes time to work through the different things. So the plans change every time. Um, but that's how it is for everybody. And I've been 100% telemedicine. So um, they're all virtual visits like this. And then patients send me photos through the uh, portal before each visit. And I put them up on screen and we talk through them and then we compare photos from visit to visit. It's always fun at the end when they've cleared, we go back and look at the beginning and everyone without fail goes, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that bad. And it's just I, I like that. That's so great. And and honestly, I was wondering to some extent how you how you actually make te telemedicine work with dermatology as a focus for your practice, um, because I know I've I've tried in the past to do telemedicine visits with dermatology uh, focused patients, and you know they're trying to hold their arm up to the camera and you're trying to see the skin lesion. It just doesn't work. So I really like the idea of sending pictures ahead of time and then comparing that. Yes. Yeah, you are correct. The video, it does nothing. And it, sometimes during the visit, they're doing that like, oh, and I'm just like, I'm not going to see it. You know, send me, a, send me a photo after the visit. That's the way I'll get good eyes on, you know, obviously biopsies or anything like that, that is, you know, not possible. And there's definitely times where if we're not sure what something is, I will refer to a board certified dermatologist for an in-office assessment, perhaps a biopsy or um, a handheld device called a dermatoscope where they kind of put a magnifying glass on the skin and look at it. So when appropriate, I will refer for diagnosis or proper, proper workup. Um, but most of the time, just doing the telemedicine works for over 98% of my patients, I would say. That's great. And it makes it so much more accessible uh, as well that patients all across the country, I imagine, can reach you and talk to you about their skin complaints. Well, I am, I am only licensed in California, Oregon, and Washington, so I will only accept patients from those three states, but um, I am launching a, a training course soon uh, to train other doctors and licensed healthcare professionals in what I do because I get emails from desperate people every day from around the country and around the world who, who want this. They've heard me speak or they've seen lectures and it really resonates. They know that, you know, this is really the way to treat it. So I'm hoping to make this type of, you know, medicine available to, to anyone anywhere eventually, but, but I only treat in my licensed states. So. That's really exciting. Dr. Greenberg. I'll be, I'll be excited to hear more about that. Yeah. Um, well, I want to say thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Um, this was great getting to learn a little bit more about you and your practice and how naturopathic medicine can help dermatological complaints. Thanks so much for having me. Wonderful. Take care.